won't let you log back in. It's quite the deal. <laughs> it is quite the deal, I'll have to say. Okay. Well, we are going to go to our next guest here in just a few moments. We're going to be live, as live can get, with our next guest. Um, no idea. We have got, Dr. Okay. We are going to save a file. <laughs> And then we are going to go to our next guest who is going to join us here on our big, big, big live here on the Quad Pod this week. We have a great guest joining us today here on Skype. Uh, Matt Rosenberg is with us. Matt is amazing. He has uh, just got a lot of things going on. Uh, you are busier than a Spaniard on a tightrope, my friend. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, I hope I don't fall off. So far, so good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's awesome. So, um, Mr. Rosenberg, you, you have accomplished a heck of a lot. G g give me a little bit on your background here before before we get into the topic here, because you've got a great background. Well, thank you. Um, I started out uh, working on a Pulitzer finalist uh investigation of corruption in Chicago when I was 19 years old. And I should be clear, I was really just Forrest Gump, you know, right, right time, right place. Uh, it was an investigation into how municipal inspectors would shake down small business owners. So we opened uh, a fake bar called the Mirage Tavern. And with reporters from the Chicago Sun-Times, my, uh, uh, boss at the Better Government Association in Chicago, a great nonprofit that's still alive and ticking, documented the way the system works in the city that works. So that was one early experience that had a big influence on me. After that, I worked to help get an independent uh, reform alderman elected to the Chicago City Council. After that, I went into journalism and, uh, and then fighting Chicago City Hall over regional airport planning, if you can believe that. So those are a few early highlights that helped sort of solidify my focus on the city of Chicago and the way that it's uh, misruled. And in my book, Just Out, what Next Chicago, I focus kind of on the modern day version of uh, urban progressive misrule <laughs> of our big cities in America. Yes, yes. You know, one of the things that um, I have noticed over, over time, and I'm sure you've noticed this, is that the people that do the corruption, they don't like being caught. <laughs> they hate that. What Quite kind true, the, <laughs> No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Jump in there, my friend. Well, I was just going to say that's quite true. But the sobering aspect of it is that according to experts who've been studying corruption in Chicago for years, only about one in 10 of the miscreants actually <laughs> get caught. Yes. And sadly, this is, this is also parallel to violent crime in Chicago, where most of the time the bad guys get away with it. And in my book, I go out on a limb and stop In other words, there's kind of ethos that prevails, you know, hey, man, don't get cut, whether you're doing contract bid rigging or, you know, a murder in the night or increasingly in the broad daylight. Uh, things have gotten very, very, very bad in Chicago with respect to violent crime. I think people knew that it has always been uh, a very risky place, very crime-ridden place, but since the heinous death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police last year, everything has gone right out the window in Chicago and now all of this is compounded by our, our politicians, particularly the mayor, Lori Lightfoot, who explains every problem, even growing black on black crime, as somehow resulting from what she calls 
systemic racism. And that is a very great dodge. It's yes. a misdirection. Yes. Oh, it is. Uh, when, when, when you were going through, some, you know, what, 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 one of the things that, um, it, I don't know, pro- probably about 20 years ago, I would say now, uh, me and my, uh, my co-host at the time, uh, Ross, the boss, the rabble rousing ringleader, as we called him, we, we, we did a lot of, uh, investigative journalism and investigations into our, uh, our local city government and our, our, our local uh, access station at the time, which basically was embezzling public monies. Um, there was a lot, of, a lot of things that we had to do, Freedom of Information Acts, all these things. Did you have to do any of this, or, or was a lot of this just out in the open for you? An awful lot of it was out in the open. Um... I didn't have to FOIA any public records, but I did do something that I've long done, digging deep into what's already out there. Um, City data banks that, you know, are hidden in the dark corners of the web. Uh, The uh, scholarly literature on various things, including the economic and social and educational effects of growing up in a single parent household versus a two parent household. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Crucial, crucial area. Um, A great deal of other things. Then I did something else, which is good old fashioned shoe leather reporting. Yes. And that was one of the, one of the most important aspects of my effort to write this book. What next Chicago notes of a pissed off native son, which I should mention is available online only at both Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Just go there and enter what next Chicago. But what I did uh, was go deep into the South side. First, I moved into the neighborhood known as Bridgeport, which is where five different Irish mayors of Chicago have come from. And it's a good place to understand the city's past and present I moved in there into an apartment and took the bus down into the deep south side practically every day and talked to black people in their homes and in their workplaces about how the city had gotten to this state where the schools don't work, the courts don't work, public, public finances are broken, crime is out of control, and people are scared to come out of their houses. And I, I, I gained access to a lot of success stories, which informs kind of the upbeat ending of the book, which I know has taken some people a little bit by surprise. But what I learned is, you know, moral authority is something that matters greatly. Living with moral authority, which includes raising your children properly, uh, working hard, developing your potential, Uh, getting an education, getting training, all that basic stuff that a lot of folks already know about, that your grandma always talked about, you know, saving, investing, um, shepherding your own human capital and that of your children. Um, So when I talked to black people on the South Side, I heard values that were very different from what BLM is saying. So I think that one huge takeaway was that there's always been and still is uh, a strand within the African-American community that dovetails with so-called conservative values, but there's nothing really new about it, you know? It just tends to get overlooked um, in these highly charged times that we live in. Now, we have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here in our big broadcast. This is an amazing, amazing book. It's called What Next Chicago? Notes of a Pissed-Off Native Son. And the uh, the author joins us today here on Skype, Matt Rosenberg. And in the fall of 2020, amidst the riots, the looting, alarming uptick in senseless killings, our guest today, uh, top journalist Matt Rosenberg, returned to his native Chicago to see if the city can dig itself out of the hot mess it's become after decades of liberal governance. 
One of the things, Matt, that I have noticed in the past, and it happened when we were doing, we were doing our stuff, and, and, and I've talked to other journalists, you start getting information. You, you start being handed information by various people um, that either they've got an axe to grind or it's one of the things that I've always said before, which is everybody always wants to sell everybody out. <laughs> Did you run into this? Did, did you, when you started doing this investigation, started putting this book together, start, started doing all this, I know that you probably started talking to various people. People started, you know, hearing about what you were doing. Were, did you just start coming into information where you're like, oh, well, I got an email today, or hey, this guy just dropped this fax off, at the, or whatever. Did you start coming into info? That happened to some extent. I would say mainly I went out and got it, and yeah. then I went yeah. into the communities around me. But what you're talking about is something that I'm quite familiar with over the course of my more than 30 years in journalism and advocacy. Um, that's happened to me time and again. People will send you that email nice. <laughs> full of, uh, you know, privileged information yes. that the public public ought to know about yes um in chicago over the course of my work on this book there was a particularly uh revealing uh, trench of uh insider emails at city hall that fell into the hands of one of the major newspapers and one of the top aides in the legal department under mayor Lori lightfoot the same mayor who has made excuses for families falling apart, for violent crime running out of control. One of the mayor's top aides in the legal department was found to have stated in an email that was leaked to the media, you know what we really need to try and do is to reform these communities. We need to instill the value of uh, cohesion in the family, of hard work and education, and even, and this was a shocker, this top city hall aide mentioned the importance of religious faith, um, which I heard about again and again in my visits to sit down with black people on the south side of Chicago. Faith and family are very important. So that this viewpoint was being expressed by a city hall insider in uh, a, a very progressive uh, uh, regime uh, which runs the city right now was quite interesting and quite revealing. Um, so you see stuff like that coming out if you look between the cracks of things, yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. We have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on Skype. It is a tremendous book. It's called What's Next Chicago? Notes of a Pissed Off Native Son. Matt Rosenberg with us today. He joins us live here on our broadcast. So what is the local Chicago media, some, some of the different folks um, said about this book? So far, I've had some good reaction. I've been able to do a number of interviews on talk radio. I uh, did an interview recently with a longtime Chicago Tribune columnist, a guy who's really been a local institution, a guy who calls out all the BS that's been going on for decades. Uh, his name is John Cass. He's out on his own now because uh, the newspapers are all kind of folding in on them themselves and there have been massive staff cutbacks uh but he does very well followed podcast i was guest on that that was a wonderful opportunity for me so i've been finding some pretty strong interest uh, amongst the media in this a very positive reaction um getting really good reaction from readers as well you know there's a, a long road to hoe here uh to world domination but what i want to do <laughs> What I want to do, uh, my version of what world domination looks like, is simply to call greater attention to the systemic misrule of our major U.S. cities 
under urban progressive governance. And, and I should hasten to add, you know, some of my best friends are Republicans and Democrats. I am neither. I am a cantankerous independent and always have been. So, you know, I follow the policy. I follow the outcomes. I follow the results. And when you see just, for instance, in the area of public education in Chicago, when you see that, you know, nearly all of the students who are tested uh, under the National Assessment for Educational Progress or the SAT, so we're talking fourth, eighth and 11th grades, nearly all of the public school students are not hitting the mark. They are not clearing the bar. Uh, the data are out there. It's not hard to go get the data. Uh, when you look at, you know, the number of murders, the number of carjackings, or the rates of those crimes, when you look at the escalating expressway shootings, when you compare the numbers to previous years, when you compare Chicago to New York to Los Angeles, when you look at the numbers across the board, the escalating public employee pension debt, which is a staggering, staggering thing in Chicago, nearly $170 billion worth of public employee pension debt will accumulate over the next several decades. The city is already paying billions every year uh, to people to not work. There are better ways to do this. Uh, and taxes and fees are being raised to a very great extent. The black middle class has left. We have ghost neighborhoods in black areas, partly because of the high taxes and fiscal mismanagement. It's yes. like one, one retired uh, a black Chicago school teacher told me when I just happened to walk into the store she was working in, she said, here's what you do, my friend. You pack your S-H-I-T and you leave. You move to Utah. <laughs> she said that. You move to Utah or Indiana or Georgia or maybe Kansas, um, Texas. You don't want to come to Kansas. <laughs> You don't want to come to Kansas. No, okay. no. You 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 but, you want to you you want to do you you want to do like most people are doing in Kansas. You want to leave. You 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 want to be like uh, one of my my radio heroes, Man Cow. You want to go to Chicago. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, when you look at the numbers, yes. You don't need to be a Republican or a Democrat. You just need to be a thinking person. Yes. And that's yes. what I try and do. So, again, the victory for me will simply be to raise consciousness and for more people to get engaged in local politics. Because for me, the big takeaway, there were a few, but one of the big ones was public policy matters, along with what I call living with moral authority. Yes. For parenting. But out there, I say get engaged. The minute that you see your local teachers union trying to restrict school choice, stand up and be counted. Find someone to run for school board. The minute that you see municipal debt spiraling out of control, do the same thing. Um, the minute that you see a lenient uh, attitude toward crime, that you see prosecutors dropping prosecutions for violent crimes, when you see low cash or no cash bail instituted to such an extent that people arrested for violent crimes are promptly let out before trial and then go and commit more of those same rotten crimes again. Yes. While... <laughs> while facing trial. That's a huge problem in Chicago, New York, uh, San Francisco, and Philadelphia, among other places. This social justice version of criminal justice leads to no justice at all for anybody. Um, so when you see these things starting to happen, 
you really have to step up and get involved. And that is one of the biggest takeaways. Otherwise, apathy feeds on itself. The outcomes become worse and worse. And there's more and more of an excuse to not get engaged in the first place. I completely agree, my friend. We have got Matt Rosenberg with us today. As we wrap up with you, my friend, uh, what's next for you as an author? You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I've got a book I'd really, a, a photo book I'd really like to publish about hiking in the Pacific Northwest, where I've lived for a great many years. Um, but that might have to wait. Um, I might dig in deeper to urban issues and what's gone wrong in Chicago. I'm particularly interested uh, in the devastating toll on families of violent crime. So that may be the next thing that I really dig into. But right now, I want to focus on current events in Chicago, continue to write about them at my new website, which, by the way, is chicagoschooled, with a K, dot com. And I'm going to see what shakes out next. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you are fantastic. Thanks for doing this, Matt. I look forward to talking to you in the future, my friend, because uh, you're a level-headed thinking individual, and uh, we need more people like you because there's too many well, ideologues. <laughs> it just, it just <laughs> seems to, to, to never get any better than ideologues. But um, thanks for doing this. The book is called What's Next Chicago? Notes of a Pissed-Off Native Son. Matt Rosenberg has been our guest, and uh, you can find him on uh, his uh, fantastic website, Chicago Schooled with a K, S K O O L L D dot com. It is amazing. He's also on Facebook at What's What Next Chicago. Also on the Twitter machine, Chicago S K O O L E D. And uh, Matt, thanks for doing this, my friend, and we will talk to you soon. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Hope we talk again. Definitely. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you, brother. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your, your, your media rounds today and, and your, your, your trips. I certainly will. We're in Brooklyn right now having a guest. <laughs> Back to Chicago soon. Take care, my friend. Definitely. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Matt. There he goes. That is Matt Rosenberg. And uh, that wraps it up here for this week's Quad Pod. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you inevitably next time.